Our final speaker for this segment is Mel Chin. Mel Chin was born in Houston, Texas, and his art, as he describes it, is both analytical and poetic, but it evades easy classification. He's known for the broad range of approaches in his art, including works that require multidisciplinary collaborative teamwork and conjoin cross-cultural aesthetics with complex issues. Mel Chin's work is documented in the popular PBS program, Art of the 21st Century. He has received numerous awards from organizations such as the National Endowment for the Arts, the New York State Council for the Arts, Art Matters, Creative Capital, and the Penny McCall, Pollock Krasner, and Joan Mitchell, and Rockefeller, and Lewis T Comfort Tiffany Foundations, all of them, among others. Please welcome Mel Chin. Hi. That's not mine. Uh, so, help me. Um, I, um, I preface, uh, is it in here? Or, I don't know. Well, I want to talk about a friend first uh, um, uh, that I met in 1974. It's about cities, and uh, it was, um, no? That's not it. Yeah. No? No? Well, that's pretty good. I, could, I can't really talk about that one. <laughs> Maybe we didn't put it in. We. Um, his name was Stephen McGregor, and we met in a, a, a film that I was doing this painting work on. It was called Nashville. And uh, he was gay, but he could paint an extremely straight line. <laughs> and we became lifelong friends. Um, um, so he, he called me back to Nashville, Tennessee in 1999. And um, he had just organized, or he received through support, or through his father, a property that was 600,000 square feet on the Cumberland River. And, um, uh, well, that's not the name of my uh, We went over the bridge and looked at this property. He, he called me, he said, uh, look, Mel, I, I see a museum with your name on it. So I had to go. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I looked at it, and the, um, we were standing, looking over the, over the bridge, and. I said, Steve, it's not big enough. And we proceeded to embark on a creative relationship um, to organize a living ecological research center that would be would have a flotilla of almost calypso-like barges that could circumnavigate the globe and, and create an international center of water studies, knowing that, th that water, and still is, one of the critical issues that face us internationally. So um, I'm speaking of it because Stephen was murdered uh, two weeks ago. And uh, the importance, I think, in, in understanding death and mourning is the obligation of a debt to those that have come with you in the world. I don't think any artist or any poet, any writer or philosopher can, under can take on projects without understanding that. And I truly feel that my debt to Stephen continues and will continue that project. So my key was that little funny looking thing. Maybe, maybe it's still outside on the table. It's an excellent presentation. I hope you enjoy it <laughs> someday. Okay. Well, um, we'll continue on another project. You know, I was invited, and we'll show these real quick. I, could, I was invited uh, in San Jose to compete in a project called the Climate Clock. Some uh, brilliant HP uh, founder uh, wanted to throw all his money at a climate clock, and they asked me, and I said, well, hell no. I, I don't want to make something that will tell us that we're all going to die. And, um, but just give us the time for that. So, but then... Just when I was ready to say no, uh, my my washing machine, or my our washing machine, my wife and I own it. Helen and I own it. Uh, it's a Maytag. It it died. It died. And I um I like to fix things, so I opened it up, 
And it was the clock, the clock that died. And um, then I really got into Maytag washing machines and, um, <laughs> and studying all the components and water usage. And, and being ecologically bent, I, I decided that I found out that it used so much water that I, I had to change. I had to change. So uh, I realized that the, the, it's not the clock uh, that you need, but you need a, a methodology to change your individual behavior and psychology. That the answer to global warming may not be this clock or an imposition or a, uh, or a Manhattan Project, as John Sturman of, of uh, the School of Business speaks of, to, to solve the problem. Um, it actually may take um, something like the Civil Rights Movement, he says. But I think the artist could be, uh, could help create the bus. Sometimes you don't have to tackle the entire thing. The, the notion that, um, and aesthetics, I, I like, I appreciate what Rick talks about aesthetics, but sometimes I see the, the poetics of the engagement or the entire project to be compelling enough to get going on. This is loading. How y'all doing? <laughs> All right. Any questions thus far? <laughs> okay, how's my time? <laughs> Good, okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and uh, okay, we'll just start. Well, I spoke about this this project, and see now you see the pictures. I don't have to say it anymore. Oh, that's not me. Okay, here it is. There. Oh, so this was the property, and this was Neil Denari and our concept for the this, instead of the largest water center, we said make the smallest one, because you could have this connection in that way. Climate, I think, was the project that would link, if just climate linked individual, it would be, a pro you know, here's melancholia, she's worried about global change, and it's the hourglass. So, this is the Maytag. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't want to make a big clock, but a lot of people screaming, oh no. So, <laughs> the, the, pro needless to say, I did not win the competition. <laughs> but instead a widget would be appropriate. But the widget would, would be something that you could interface with every user on the planet. This is like Gus who decides to start speaking, and you would, could actually speak to the climate, and it would always be your friend. It would never say you should recycle or you bastard, you, you drove your SUV. You could say you drove your SUV like Gus, global user sample, and, and it would say, oh, that's okay. Uh, you know, 6,000 people used it in Dallas today. It's all right, but it won't make that much difference. But 6.7 people walked today, and that did make a difference. You know. So uh, Dan Gilbert talks about we always see uh, faces in clouds, right? But never clouds and faces. And I think that's why he says we also will never, ever stop the polar bears from dying. Because our psychology and our, our, our mindset is organized according to uh, fast motion, like if someone throws something at me, I might move. But the, the truth of it is that uh, I think you can put faces on something. It's how you change the, the, the organization of that approach. So this could be a possibility. And we are still working on it. So there's all that you know, stuff, you know how this works, and we describe it, that you can invert the situation through relationships. And the, the relationship is not something huge, but behavioral and individual. So. Oh, excuse me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please repeat after me? Ladies, man for a holding head. Make you dumb, make you dead. P-A-Y-D-R-L-T. Put 
took the children and family. If you in the R.E.D., make the money for New Orleans. Congress bound the livery. Sons are strong by you and me. This is the Operation Pay Dirt $100 Bill Project Update. <laughs> I going to, uh, Rick and I went to Katrina in September and nothing can prepare you. By then some things were, uh, had abated, but it was more the psychological weight and physical weight, uh, not just the physical destruction, but the psychological social destruction that Katrina had established. One thing it impacted it had in me was after a lifetime of creative process, I, was, I felt totally inadequate to respond. It shocked me terribly, and I felt undeserving of my relationship in the world of art. But I, it, it obligated me to go back and do research, and I uncovered more and more layers when I, I sometimes researched to destroy my preconceived notions of things. And I understood there was a layer that was underneath, that was uh, in the soil. Um, and also, when something is so horrifically massive, you also begin to organize your mind in terms of then the magnitude of the response is obligated to be equally equal in scale. One thing that started this in my research was to visit Howard Milkey, who had studied the soils of New Orleans for the last 20 years. EPA said it didn't get worse and NRDC said it was the worst that's ever been. So I said, who's right? He said, EPA is right. But it also obligates the second question, how bad was it? Well, probably if not the worst in the country, the second worst in the country. But what does that mean? It means that uh, these numbers that equate with numbers that have been in West Dallas for years and continue to be, even more so, the, these numbers of 400 parts per million is a threshold where no child should put their hand down because they might put it to their mouth. And we have 2,000, 3,000 regularly in New Orleans. Why? Because it affects you in an invert, a very bad way. So when I looked at this, these are just numbers. But he gave me the relationship to the human where he said that means 30 to 50% of the inner city childhood population in New Orleans were were blood poisoned before the storm, and I found that unacceptable. So, so it's about the blood. It's about blood being affected, and brains being affected, and bones and tissue being affected from the earliest stage of development. And then you have to solve it. There's something you need called money. I said, well, damn it, how much is there available to do this in this post-Katrina world? They said, zero. At that moment, we decided that we had to make it. So you looked at the extent of the outreach would be, have to be big, and so we, we had an armored truck that was retrofitted to run on vegetable oil because it stopped at school cafeterias, and we recruited secret agents, operatives, or high school, elementary school teachers, and it escalated to more uh, people involved. I can't name their names. Uh, and, and then we created a Facebook. We still have this up. The fa you can be a $100 Facebook f friend forever if you choose to join this, and you should. And you can go to the website and find more things and help create this democratic example of democratic expression by drawing 100. You can go to the site and download the template like this. And you can order a hundred of them for four dollars and take it to your friends and families and schools and contribute more but one per person and you can draw animals like this and you come up with fancy new slogans like instead of in god we trust ooh la la or you can draw people you know you can have that or you can draw the great martin luther king or one che and the many different faces of obama or you can, you can also contribute something about your personal history, like this child that was stuck in the dome during the height of Katrina. And you can be Devion Charlet, right? 
or you can be Rosina Wolfhard Ward of St. Louis, who's 92 years old, who contributed her expression to the project. So it's no age. there are no age discrimination allowed. And you could be Uma Thurman, who's really tall, and she can post up way high. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Uma's drawing is equivalent to yours. We do. And we built a safe house. It's been decommissioned. It no longer exists in New Orleans, but we felt it, we obligated it to be in the neighborhood of St. Rock, where I found 5,000 parts per million lead in the backyard. And we had a press conference, and we initiated the intent, and we started first with a collaboration of the scientists and moved toward the medical professionals that would take. So you could go in the safe house, and then we, it opened up, and we closed it down. And then it moved from there. It's been decommissioned, so we have other incarnations in Houston or in Atlanta or in Philadelphia, where the Philadelphia Fundred Mint is there now, right? So you can, you can send them there now. And so this is the, the premise, right? You can draw, trim, send, collect, load, deliver, present, exchange, transform. Pretty easy, but the dynamics of uh, combating cynicism and that reality is always there. So you're going to take this whole batch of drawings on a pallet and take it to the steps of Congress and we'll ask support for a process because on top of that stack will be the solution to the problem. It's not good enough. See, you thought expression was good enough. It's good enough for Egypt, but we're American. We need more. <laughs> the process is actually a transformation of the toxic particle of lead that is found in these soils and transform it to a non-bioavailable form so it can never endanger the brains, the blood, and bones of a child ever again. The reports that come out of Cincinnati, the lead report that just established a 30-year study after uh, came out in 2008, uh, found that children that were measured 30 years ago, from prenatal to six years old, they went back to check on them, and there was a 55% increase in incarceration, criminal behavior, violent behavior by those with elevated lead. So now the criminologists are on board. Something is terribly wrong within our prisons and our society. And it comes from not 21st century, but 19th and 20th century realities in the environment. This is the pyromorphic molecule. And so we've launched this trip, and we've already gone 18,000 miles. We only have 380,000 drawings, but we felt obligated to collect those that had already been drawn. And we will reestablish a new uh, uh, effort this year. So we went to the schools, and Catholic kids always get this treatment from the sun. I have no idea why. <laughs> and there's always enthusiasm and great bon voyage. And so we even had Benjamin Franklin show up. And we had like 7,000 uh, funders from a, in the guitar case from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. We, we have no discrimination from white girls from Mississippi or Latinas from San Antonio. Orale, we will accept the funders. No sexual discrimination or cheering, cheerleading discrimination. We will go to Provo, Utah and collect under a high security uh, uh, circumstances and total documentation. We have been to Florida, where they, it, it wasn't $10,000 worth, it was 10,467 drawings collected at one high school. And we have guards in training in Casper, Wyoming, and we have MICA honor funded guards preparing for the delivery when we receive the three million. This is a test run to the steps of the Capitol. And we have the fabulous Baltimore uh, funded boys talking about the hundreds of the hundreds. We have uh, breaking news. The Smithsonian was offered this plan of the acceptance of three million funders, not by Mel Chen, because I have evolved way below uh, to, to be only to be the delivery person. I think I'm too old to be an emerging artist, so we are settling for submerging artists. <laughs> but we're in concert, uh, conversation with the museum to accept this as a package of. 8,000 pounds of human expression 
in one load. And on top of that will be the scientific protocol and effort that is being right now established by the EPA. The EPA desperate to find a solution to yards similarly poisoned in Oakland asked for the protocol which we developed for two years, which we gave them in 24 hours. They have been testing it for the last eight months and we're waiting for the results of the stomach acid wash in vitro processes to confirm the safety of the soil that has been treated by the process that we have recommended. This is Lisa Jackson, the head of the EPA, and Steve Kenelog, Emergency Response EPA Region 9, and Barbara Lee of California when we met there to discuss what we're trying to accomplish. So this is the Oakland area, and this is the material, and we have more breaking news. Now, e HUD has given us 500000 not 5000 $500,000 to launch the similar uh, test of protocol in New Orleans. So we return back again to New Orleans to begin that verification process so we can be sure. Because there's one thing after leaving New Orleans, we cannot afford in our good conscience to give the people that have suffered enough one more bogus solution, one more bogus prom promise. <laughs> this is the correlation of test scores of children in fourth grade in science and the relationship to lead and soil. And we're not saying this is gonna solve everything, but we are saying you should do something. You know, someone asked me, uh, what about the oil spill? Oil spill, I said, well, you know, oil and water does not mix. Lead and blood does not mix. I think we better start with one of those, but not just keep talking about it. And that is what we must do. So the violence, there's just, I just, in the YouTube, there's all, kinds of images of fights, and this is from Dallas. And that violence is correlated to, I feel, issues in the mind that have been compromised. This is the, in West Dallas, we had a situation, and still exists, where some people still are not getting the proper medical treatment after they've transformed that site here. In this neighborhood, there are, they, they feel, and you probably know this if you're from Dallas, there's 11,000 deaths probably attributed over the many years when the smelter site was there within that neighborhood to lead-related poisoning and problems. So this is the future from uh, New York Times, I hope. And I, I think that what I'm trying to say that uh, the, the poetry or the, the, the aesthetics of this project is how can places like Oakland and New Orleans or Dallas not be the places that you look down and say, how can I help you? But how can these places be transformed by processes where they can be the rescue city? That they will rise up by offering cities all across America a chance again in their own uh, blighted neighborhoods. So anyway, in the words of Elvis, thank you very much.